Now, the last couple of Tucci games, we played against the Giants. When we played them, what, three weeks ago, whatever it was, they had two wins. We play against Detroit Lions. They have three wins. You know, uh, we play the Redskins, uh, probably the worst team in the National Football League. But we're winning them, and I know a win is a win. But I'll tell you what, this win was the best win I've seen in a few years. And that includes last year. Why? Because it was the offense. The offense that set the tone. The offense took the ball and ran it and passed it right down their throats. I'm speaking about the Cowboys. Not our defense. It was our offense that took the initiative. And up front, our offensive line, they've been criticized all year. Guess what? They stepped up to the plate tonight. So, damn it, congratulations to the offense. And again, congratulations to the Bears and the Mitchell Trubisky for finally getting out and making certain things happen. Bears are going to go 4-1 and one in their second half start to this season with three games left. They've come back from a rough stretch and are becoming pertinent in December with the Green Bay Packers on the horizon at Lambeau Field next Sunday. They get a mini break, mini bye after a 31-24 win over the Dallas Cowboys. A game not as close as the scoreboard indicates. Mitchell Trubisky with a big night. Three touchdown throws in the red zone and a red zone touchdown run. Well, they'll call it 23 yards, not quite the red zone. Big night for him. Allen Robinson, two touchdown catches. He's with Mark in our Northwestern Medicine sideline report. Game plan. Nagy finally did. Defensively, we went after people. But I'll t tell you what, we have three more games to go. Now, what I saw today, we, we, we met the challenge tonight. We did. We met the challenge. And where'd we meet it? We met it up front. Our defensive line and our offensive line. And by the way, that kid Kwiatkowski, since he's been playing, I'll tell you, that kid's playing second to none. He's all over the place. So I'm very proud of everybody with the Chicago Bears. Did a good job. Mitch Trubisky looks like he's hopefully coming into his own. By him actually saying a few weeks ago, I'd like to open up the offense. I'd like to move the pocket. We're finally seeing it, folks. Let's hope it continues for the beyond the next three weeks. But why did it take the kids in the choir to tell the choir director what to do? That's still on Nagy. We'll get to that. But, hey, great win, and nobody knows how badly we needed it more than that bunch of players. Quick they answer. needed it. The reason why, Dan, Nagy didn't know. That's it. His quarterback had to tell him. Yep. He must be listening to the podcast of our post game. <laughs> Mitchell Trubisky tonight, 23 of 31, 244 yards, three touchdowns. He did have the one interception. That was early in the football game on the Bears' first drive. Ran it 10 times, OB, 62 yards out of the pocket. He had a 23-yard run tonight, which was sweet. It was great to see. Straight up great to see. And all and of a sudden... the only reason why you're seeing that, Mark... Is because they're moving this kid out of the pocket. Yeah. If they drop him back, play after play after play in this game tonight, we would have lost this football game. J.P. Holtz, guys, three catches for 56 yards. Jesper Horstead, we're talking about tight ends right now, four catches for 36 yards. Cordero Patterson, for a second, was actually playing tight end. He caught a ball for 33 yards. These are things we have not been seeing. It's it was. What have it, I been telling? Where should Cordell Patterson be playing? Either tight end, or he should be the ace back. And we've been saying that since September. And finally, injuries have necessitated the fact that he was given opportunities and playing time. Guys, I'm just telling you, the game of football, yeah, it's kind of complex. But it's right in front of you. If you just watch, sooner or later, this team has kind of been backed into a corner, and now the quarterback has responded, as well as the rest of the team. It's great to watch. Phone number here is 312-981-7200. 312-981-7200. Hampton will be with Kaz, is sponsored by Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana Chevy Dealers at ChevyDriveChicago.com. The Bears are 7-6. and six. Yep. Beat, beat the Cowboys tonight, took care of them. 
Three huge games to go. Certainly one next week against the Green Bay Packers as the Bears will try to stay relevant and we'll be rooting on some Minnesota Vikings losses. The Vikings and Packers have to play each other, which is a good thing. So we got to beat Green Bay, and then Green Bay's got to beat Minnesota. A lot has to happen, but the Bears are still alive on 720 WGN. That's w a good thing. On 720 WGN. Warning. And a heartbeat continues. They beat another NFC team in the Dallas Cowboys here tonight. Jeff, you know what it's going to be sad about this? There's going to be more conversation about Jason Garrett and his 100%. future than there will be about the Chicago Bears and their development. All the Nationals, that'll be, yes. honest, that'll be all about it tomorrow. A backflip by Tariq Cohen, a knee by Trubisky. Bears go to 7-6. and six. Right here, we know uh, that uh, that score didn't indicate how bad they beat us tonight. I don't care what the standings are, what the numbers are. We had thought that we could come up here and play a really fine football game team. I mean, a, a good team, play a fine football game. Drive here, Joe, to, to come out here to start this second half for the Bears. And what's at stake? This is really impressive by them. And, and they can put the dagger in the Cowboys here early in this third quarter. Here's a quick throw to Miller. Good throw. Touchdown. What a drive and what a throw there by Trubisky. Big night for the quarterback, Mitchell Trubisky, and it really, he's been on a roll, guys. I mean, he played well last week against the Lions. He played well against the Giants. You could argue even in the Rams game he was decent, and then in the other Detroit game, you could say he's had five good games in a row here. There, there were spots where we said, and we, we gave congratulations to the fact that we were seeing glimpses of what has to happen. This kid, you know, for what we gave up, what he has to, you know, be able to, to, to do for this team. And finally, you know, we're getting, you know, whiffs of some good play. Now, think about this. This offense for the first time all year scored four touchdowns in a regulation football game. This is the 13th week of the season. Finally, we score four touchdowns. Think about this, OB. The punter does not have to punt until six minutes left in the third quarter. When was the last time you remember that happening? Not only that, but the depth. Think about this. You know, we're down to our third, fourth, fifth tight end. And yet they were very, very effective tonight. Think about the defense. Kevin Tolliver. Hey, we didn't really miss the Mukamara. Think about this. You know, Roquan Smith goes out in the second quarter. And guess what? Kevin Pierre Lewis, number 57, the guy we remember from the London game when he roughed the kicker and basically gave the Raiders a path to victory. Well, tonight, he more than made up for it. He was everywhere. He was physical, and he was a monster. And he was the best player on the, the defensive side of the game. All that was, you know, basically second, third team guys stepping up, making big contributions in a game. Like we said, OB, we're in the playoffs now, whether you like it or not. The playoffs in Chicago, oh, right they now? started. Yeah, they started Every three game's weeks a playoff ago. game. <laughs> Every playoff. But, you know, and, and, and also... You know, the Bears have always been so methodical. So, you know, they, they get in the huddle, takes them forever to get in the huddle. And uh, it takes them, they get out of the huddle, they meander up to the line of scrimmage. We're a very slow offensive team. And it showed from last year to this year. Last year we got away with it because we had this phenomenal defense that took the ball away, gave them great field position. And by the way, we had great field position again today, starting out on, on, just on our own 46 yard line, their 46 yard line, et cetera. That's great to see. But I'll tell you what, folks, what I saw tonight was a team that had a purpose. These kids somehow, and I don't know if it was the coaches because I've seen more negative stuff than positive stuff from this coaching staff. But I'll tell you what, which I've said from week after week, these kids have been going out there and playing their heart out. Playing their heart out. And finally, again, finally, they were put in a position, especially Mitch Trubisky, to get the hell out of there and make something happen. Either by running or by throwing passes. And, and guess what? We finally have last year and this year, we finally now started to get some decent receivers. And the reason why they're decent is because they get separation. And if you can get a receivers that can get separation, then all you got to have is the quarterback hit you with the timing. Now, the last couple of two, three games, we played against the Giants. When we played them, what, three weeks ago, whatever it was, they had two wins. We play against 
Detroit Lions, they have three wins. You know, uh, we play the Redskins, uh, probably the worst team in the National Football League. But we're winning them, and I know a win is a win. But I'll tell you what, this win was the best win I've seen in a few years. And that includes last year. Why? Because it was the offense. The offense that set the tone. The offense took the ball and ran it and passed it right down their throats. I'm speaking about the Cowboys. Not our defense. It was our offense that took the initiative. And up front, our offensive line, they've been criticized all year. Guess what? They stepped up to the plate tonight. So, damn it, congratulations to the offense. And again, congratulations to the Bears and to Mitchell Trubisky for finally getting out and making certain things happen that look very, very positive. I want to name a couple guys as you're going through the positive thing. and I, I don't want to get too far away from Allen Robinson. This guy has been consistent all season long. He made another, he had two touchdown catches today. One of them, Hamp, defenders draped all over him. Trubisky, give him credit, great throw, bullet right to the chest, but he barely had his arms free to catch it. But somehow was able to get himself an, an inch free and gets himself another touch of us. He, he's catching balls in traffic all season long. He did it again tonight. He really has. And, you know, I, I never had the those ligament tears that he has had to deal with the recovery of. But, yeah, hey, you, get, you, you go and you get your knee operated on, it changes things. And it takes a while for you to come back. And you can see the steady incremental progress that he has made, not only in his route running, but the confidence to stand in and catch the ball when given an opportunity. And so much of the time in OB, you, you, you know, we've, we have basically beat this horse to death. Hey, Trubisky has not given him an awful lot of really choice balls to make plays on a catch. But tonight, especially at the end of the first half on what was a third down and seven seconds left, Trubisky fired a just, a, I mean, a bullet in and he caught it with heavy coverage all over him, the linebacker. And hey, you know, that's, that's why we signed him. That's why we brought him here. And that's why he is our number one receiver. Let's do it. The Muller Game Changing Moment, guys, which is sponsored by the Muller Auto Group with family-owned dealerships in Highland Park, Gurney, and Hoffman Estates. Muller Automotive. You will not be disappointed. We love Muller. Hampo, what do you got? Okay, five minutes to go left in the first half. The Dallas Cowboys were in position to kick a field goal. And, yep, that's right, their kicker missed. So what happens? We take over. Five minutes to go, we put together a 14-play, 68-yard drive that culminated in that catch by Allen Robertson in the end zone with no time left virtually for us to take a 17-7 to lead into halftime. And remember this, folks. We know this. The Cowboys are 0-6 when uh, uh, losing at halftime. Guess what? Now they're 0-7. That was a beautiful moment. Huge play. And then to come out, at the start the second half, go right back down, make it a 24-7 game. It was good night, Irene, for Dallas and perhaps their head coach, Jason Garrett. We'll see if... I wouldn't... But, don't be surprised. He might... Don't be surprised if tomorrow morning, by noontime, you hear that he is relieved of his duties as head coach of the Dallas Cowboys. That team looked in total and complete disarray. Danny, do you agree with me? Yeah, and they were uninspired. I mean, they were horrible. Think about this, Ob. I mean, and and so much of the time, and you know, we're kind of tongue in cheek saying we're in the playoffs because you got to have something that makes you get up in the morning and go to work and 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 try to get better and and try to improve. They kept it alive to go ahead up to Green Bay. Right. Guess what? What you know what? But the Cowboys, they're in control of their yeah. division, and they look like they could care less. And and the mime, the you know, <clears throat> Jason Garrett never says anything. Never. At least Nagy was cussing the coach, uh, the officials tonight. Did you see that? Yeah. Get, let me tell you something. It all matters. It all has an effect on the way the game is played out. Now let me tell you something, folks. And I, uh, Danny, you, you can jump in any time. You back me up or, or talk me down. I'm going to tell you what, what, what a victory tonight. And, and it wasn't given to us, by the way. We didn't luck out. We took it to them up front and beat them up front and did one hell of a job. So again, kudos to everybody. Now, you've got this wonderful feeling. You've got, you've got that energy back. 
And next week, where are we playing? Up in Green Bay against our dreaded rivals, the Green Bay Packers. If that couldn't turn out better, Dan, for us to win here at home, convincingly the way we won, and to go up to Green Bay, and guess what? You don't have to be apologetic. You don't have to be afraid. You just walk up there and go up there and take care of business, just like you did tonight. This will be a great game up in Green Bay, and I hope these kids remember it from hour to hour, from day to day, until next Sunday at noon, and go out there and tear the Packers apart. You know, momentum is something that you have to manufacture. It just doesn't blow up your pant leg. You got to go out there and make it happen. And we've got a little momentum now. Now, remember this. Last year was a special year. We won 12 games. The game I remember was the Ram game on Sunday night where we took apart the mighty L.A. Rams. who went on and played in the Super Bowl. Well, this year, thus far, this is the signature game. They can build on it. And remember this, Mark Carmen. we're not going to be on after the game next week. We're going to be on before it, but we'll tell you all about it next Sunday at 9 a.m. That's right. We've got a three-hour pregame next week, and you know who is with us for that pregame. That's right. It's Jeff Vukovic. He's back in our double Eugene Huddle right here, Luke. the straight shooter who knows insurance. He's on our side. He'd love to help you. Nationwide's on your side. Check out jeffvook.com. Nationwide is indeed yeah. on your side. Quick we timeout, Obi. We'll come on back or hold that thought, okay, my right, friend? Sure. Hold that thought. 312-981-7200. talk about myself. <laughs> Phone lines are open. It's <laughs> Escape, lo va a buscar, el pase es perfecto Y eso es Y a la cerrada y va al aire Trubisky Es un pase pantalla, hay uh. enorme espacio Para el ala cerrada que se corta Si el centro sigue de pie Dallas presiona con cuatro Trubisky, el balazo al centro, anotación Aparece por primera vez en el partido The chicken, the lasagna, the pasta The only thing better than Trubisky today was Bartolini's It was Unbelievable, off the charts, MVP. OB, you crushed your Bartolini's. What was that? <laughs> I, I was reading the stats. I understand. I'm you, sorry. I said you crushed your Bartolini's. Oh, you loved your oh, chicken. You, please. Yes, you loved it. Uh, what, what, what stats are you reading over there, sir? No, I was just, I'm going to tell you something. I see two things that jump out at me. Okay. Okay? Remember I always tell, we got to score touchdowns. What's the most important thing that... The thing that we don't do, that we've seen, we don't convert on third down. You got to convert on third down, move the ball down the field, score touchdowns. Then I mentioned we scored four touchdowns. Here's the thing. On third down, we were 7 to 12 for almost 60%, folks. If we do that, and if we're around 400 yards, the next three games, I guarantee you, we will win every one of those next three games. Amen. You hear what I'm telling you? If we can be around 60%, in third down conversions and around 400 total yards offensive, we will win the next three games. Big challenge coming up here with Green Bay. and But everyone was saying all week, the Cowboys front four is super tough. The Bears offense is going to be stretched to do, to do a whole lot. It's going to be a tight game. It's going to be a low-scoring game. Didn't turn out that way. Let me tell you something. That, the Cowboys, to me, total and complete messed up disarray. Offensively and defensively, my God, they're supposed to be that good on defense? They were eighth in the league coming into this game. And think about this. They put together a 17-play opening, uh, a, a play, a 17-play opening touchdown drive to start the game. Nobody in the league's done that this year. 17 plays, boom, right down to, and guess what? Our defense then goes to work, makes some adjustments. They were never really a threat the rest of the ball. And yeah, I thought, at least our defense didn't find any holes to jump into. I tell you, they stepped up to the plate. And again, I love to see it. And the thing that jumps out at me, Danny and Mark, and to our listeners, what jumps out at me when we win the damn football game, and, and whether it's by a few points or whatever this year, when we win the game, we win it up front. Our offensive line and our defensive line, Take care of the game, and that's how we win. Kaz coming up right after 11 o'clock. we got the news next. Bears 31, the 
Cowboys 24, the Bears are 7 and 6 on 720 WG. Ayer muchos defensivos, pero al final lo completa correctamente. Y ahora va a ir por tierra. Mitch Trubisky tiene espacio, tiene el touchdown para los osos que responden de inmediato y vuelven a ponerse 16 adelante. That's the phone line, that's the text line. Let's bring in the Kaz man on his own show, Glenn Kozlowski. Kazi, welcome. What do you think, Glenn Kozlowski, is the main reason the Bears are at least starting to turn their entire season around? Well, I, I think they've uh, figured out, finally, how to use their quarterback in a way that he can be successful, and you saw it tonight, and by far the best performance they've had as an offense, and, you know, part of it, too, is probably Dallas, but that's not the Bears' fault that they're playing a bad Dallas team. They, they play who they play, so... Uh, he, he actually turned a corner tonight. The young guy looked good. He looked like an uh, NFL quarterback, I think, Ed and Dan, for the first time, and it was uh, it was good to see. Mm -hmm. I mean, he minimized his mistakes. He made maybe two bad throws tonight, and that's it. And that's unusual, right? I mean, he really he was sharp. He, he took the uh, check downs, and you know, the Cowboys playing that single high defense and not coming out of it made it a little easier. But still, the kid overall chose when he should run, when he should check down, and, and he did probably it's the best quarterbacking job he's done. Well, and, and not only that, but there's a lot of reasons why this offense clicked. Well, first and foremost, the offensive line actually was very productive. Number two, we didn't have a lot of drops, didn't have a lot of penalties. We had balance. What was it, 33 passes, 32 runs? I mean, these are good things. These are things that you look around the league, the offenses that are productive on a weekly basis, they do this. This is just what they do. But most, right. most importantly to me, and, you know, Mark Carmen brought this up while we were on uh, break there for a second, talking about the shuffling of Cody Whitehair back to center and putting James Daniel at left guard. And essentially what this enabled Trubisky to do is concentrate more on reading coverages and running the offense, not having to set the middle linebacker and decide on protection, uh, you know, uh, uh, calls. So just taking that little bit off his plate now, cause seems to me has enabled him to play a little quicker, a little freer. Look, he's, he's, we know this. He's a slow processor. He can't read defenses like Patrick Mahomes or Tom Brady, but. The less you make him do, the quicker he's able to do what he has to do. And tonight, I think we're starting to see it. And, and they're booting him. They're, they're putting him on the run. They're moving him out of the pocket. So these are things that Ed has been talking about for, uh, you know, since he's been here. Hey, use the kid on whatever his strengths are and, and just, you know, build, build your offense around that. And they're starting to do that. Um so, hey, you know, look, every week is a playoff game for the Bears. They they go up to Lambeau Field. They have the right now to, uh, you know, they beat uh, the Packers. <laughs> They're in the thick of it now. They're going to have to win their division, but, you know, because you look at the rest of the NFL, um, Rams and, and the Bears have the same uh, record right now. Um, you know, the Rams beat them. So they really have to get in by winning the division, but they got to win the next three games, and that's still a, it's yeah. going to be a tough sled, but, hey, they, they've got a shot each week. It's a, it's a, a new week to try and win again. But it, the, here's, here's the, I guess, the overarching silver lining of tonight's game. They go to Green Bay with a lot more confidence, especially the offense, especially the quarterback, and maybe most importantly, the play caller. You know, Nagy has, we brought him to task many, many times the last two years. And I know last year was the golden years, right? Oh, they were in the playoffs. Oh, but guess what? We left a lot on the table. And finally, tonight was one of the few days that we have seen this team go out, assert itself, and make things happen. We scored four touchdowns for the only time of the, of the season, cause. And, you know, these are things that, a play caller, a quarterback, an offensive lineman, they can put in the, their back pocket and say, hey, this is what we were able to do in a primetime football game against a, a worthy opponent. And, we, you know, I don't care. Dallas was was bad tonight. They, they got issues. And who cares if their coach gets fired? Bottom line is, 
We go to Green Bay with confidence and Akeem Hicks. Well, so, yeah, that, that's going to make a big difference, too. You're going to see a better defense with him out on the field. No question about it. I think Glenn and, and Dan and Mark, and uh, I think you guys heard me tell the cows come home. What do we do on offense? The most important thing, convert on third down, move the ball down the field, score touchdowns. And that's what we finally did today. But we did it with a diversified game plan of running and passing, moving the ball out of the pocket. I've been talking about that, my God, next to forever. But it happened tonight, and I'll tell you what, what a great, great victory this was for the Bears. Kazi, hang on, and we're going to bring you on back here and take some calls with you. But before we do that, it is time to grade the Bears secondary. How was the coverage today? It's sponsored by PPG Paints for the best coverage. Chicagoland Painters pick PPG. Gentlemen, grades? What do you think, OB? I give them a solid B, and the reason is, you know, and until garbage time at the end, the Cowboys were, were virtually discombobulated on offense. They didn't know where to go. After the opening drive, hey, we played two and a half really good quarters of, of secondary play. I'll tell you what, I'd give the defensive line a B plus, the linebackers an A plus, and the D-backs I would give a B minus then. Kazi? Linebackers yeah, I, were all over I, I the place. I would agree. I would agree. I, I think the linebacker play was the best Outstanding. part of the defense. I mean, and you know, it's funny. You got two back uh, 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 backups out there, and they're playing like all stars. So, really fun to watch that, and you know, it gives you a little more depth. All right, we're coming back with Ed, Rich, Mike, Randy, and Eddie Hampen will be in with Kaz with you till midnight. Adam Hogue is at 11.35. And for news at 10, you should watch WGN's Mike and Matera, Joe Donlin, Dan Rohn, and Chicago's most trusted meteorologist. That is Tom Skilling. For TV News at 10, watch Chicago's very own WGN. Quick time out, and uh, your call's coming up next, 720 WGN. The pulse of our community flows through all of us. It propels you to explore your passions, serve your neighbors, and build new connections. It reverberates with meaning and force, propelling forward the lifeblood that connects us. But what if one day the pulse stopped? We are Versity, Blood Center of Illinois. We're driven by the urgency of our work and inspired by the generosity of our donors. It's our privilege to safeguard these gifts and ensure they go to where the need is greatest in our community. There is no substitute for blood. It is precious, it is perishable, and the need for it is vital. Your blood donations keep the pulse of our community strong. Schedule your donation at versity.org or call 800-72-GIVE. Together we are a beacon of hope. A beacon of hope. A beacon of hope. A beacon of hope. It's back, baby. What's back? The Parker Sofa, Big Daddy Arvid. The Parker is back at Penny Mustard? Ring a ding ding, Nicole. I love the Parker Sofa. A lot of people do. It takes them back to a time of Rat Packers, Martinis, and the Bossa Nova. Now that's my bag, daddy -o. But now, the Parker has been revamped. Ooh, I love the sexy red leather. And check out the new mini chair. The perfect compliment. Crazy. This sofa isn't just in the room, it becomes the room. You are guaranteed to become 87% cooler just by by owning the Parker sofa. Where are you going? I'm splitting for a swinging clam bake here at the Kit Kat Club. Ben, that's the break room. Don't be so square. You're cramping my style. The Parker sofa, American made with a warrantied solid hardwood frame and unsmooshable ultra high density foam seats, starting at just 3128 at Penny Mustard. Six locations throughout Chicagoland. Pennymustard.com. Better versions of what people want. Grown up in this era where you, you know, fail miserably and everybody gives you a fist bump. The best Bears coverage. The Chevy Hamp and OB Show with Cause right now. Sponsored by Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana Chevy dealers. Yes. ChevyDriveChicago.com on 720 WGN Radio. Fist bumps all around the night, baby. Bears 31, the Cowboys 24. Dak Prescott did not have a good night, OB. You said. Zach with a Z. <laughs> All right. Before I leap over this table, <coughs> hey guys, I, I, hey, listen, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna make a point here, real quick. Before we get to the callers, callers, hold on. Something really, really, 
important happened tonight. It was right at the end of the first half. Think about this. We were goal to go. We had no timeouts. And we actually, knowing we had no timeouts, we had to throw the ball into the end zone three successive times. Think about this. Wims got hurt on the second one. He dropped the first one, dropped the second one, got hurt. And then they threw it again to Allen Robinson. Now, here's the point. We have been screaming all year, get the quarterback out of the line. But when you are in the red zone, end zone. Don't, don't throw it behind the line of scrimmage. He's trying to run a wheel route. Drive. It's too compressed. Throw it into the – they finally did cause Yahoo. I'll never forget what happened <laughs> right there in the south end zone tonight. And it was awesome. And, it, you know, it's shocking. Uh, Ed's been screaming that. <laughs> and we've watched him at times when he, you know, at the beginning of the year when – our quarterback would try to do it, and tonight it all fit together perfectly. And he, you know, he really he he played a, an outstanding game. Let's just give the kid credit. Right, he's, just... You know, he's taken our wrath, but we also got to give him props when he shows up. And and you know, look, he he played extremely well tonight. Let's jump Happy to... for him. Yeah, absolutely. Let's jump to some calls here. Hampo being cause with you till midnight on seven twenty WGN. Mike and Rockford, you've been waiting patiently. Go ahead, my friend. Well, guys, how are you? We're great, Mike. Hey, listen, I, I they, it was a really good team effort. They really played, and, and Nagy made some good decisions tonight, unlike the other games where he's really, uh, was a debacle. But I want to say something that's still concerning to me. I know Hicks is coming back. Um, and, and does anybody know how bad uh, uh, Roquan Smith's injury is? And then uh, that that's the one question I have, The second and my, David Montgomery. And then the second question or comment I want to make is it didn't seem like they were putting a lot of pressure on Prescott. Um, he had a lot of time back there uh, at times. I mean, he was, I, I just didn't seem like they were pressuring him that much, guys. All right, Mike, appreciate it. The and, and they weren't because he was he, he was horrible at reading and he was late on his throws. And, you know, why pressure a guy that's going to implode on his own you know why would you pressure him the, well, guy's, the guy's terrible yeah well we weren't beating a, a lot of their offensive linemen one-on-one they've got three all pros and hey guess what you know they were they were pretty good you know Khalil Mack had a, a track sack where he got out of the you know got out to the quarterback and tripped him uh late in the game but other than that there wasn't a whole lot of disruption in the pocket but, hey, it didn't matter. As you said, Cos, Dak uh, was committing suicide. Yeah. So let him do it. And, and yeah, he was bad. As far as Roquan goes, just to answer Mike's question, he left the game with a pec injury, pectoral injury, and uh, Nagy saying at the podium, quote, it doesn't look real good for him. So I'm guessing that Roquan is probably done for the season. Those injuries don't heal in three weeks. So that, that's uh, you're, you're dealing with no Roquan. Uh, who I mean, Hamp, you, you've been on him that uh, the stats look good, but the performance is not necessarily there. You're you're dealing with no Trevath, and you're getting Akeem Higgs back, but you don't know what you're getting here. To ask him to step in to be the Akeem Higgs of last year, that's a, that's a tall task, right? There. It will be, but you know, Kevin Pierre Lewis and uh, Nick Kwiatkowski are very good players. Their weakness is coverage, and guess what? We're playing a quarterback that will exploit you in Green Bay, so that's not going to shape up so good for us. Well, let's get. Yeah, it. we're going to have to get pressure. I mean, against the Packers, if you don't, he's going to eat you. Yeah. You know, he's going to tear up the backers. And I'm hesitant to do this, but he's been waiting the longest, and uh, we love you, Ed, in Texas. Go ahead, my friend. Welcome to WGN. Good evening, gentlemen. Uh, this is Ed from Texas, but I'm Ed originally from Maywood. Went to Proviso. There you go. Proviso greetings to OB. Go uh, Pirates. I'm call Yes, yes, sir. I'm calling because I'm not happy. I, I, I do think the next game, three games are winnable. If you hold the Packers to 10 points again and have a good offensive performance, our guys beat the Packers. Uh, Mahomes, if you keep him maybe 25 and lower, and have a decent offensive performance because they don't have a defense. Our guys win again. And then the Bears have the Vikings number. The problem is we still need the Vikings to collapse. We need the Rams to lose twice. And so right. the hole that the Bears dug themselves in, that's why I'm not happy. Yeah, you and shouldn't I be. Yeah, this is self-inflicted. We Thanks, should Ed. never have lost to the Raiders or the Chargers. This, those are, I mean, but, but 
it is what it is. It's called reality. And guess what? The Rams get beat this weekend because uh, Seattle's going in to, uh, uh, to play the Rams, I believe. And... Uh, on the double check right now on that one. I, Look, I, the, the Vikings. The Vikings have the Lions at home, which is uh, obviously an extremely winnable game. They got to go to the Chargers. Uh, you know, Los Angeles has been playing dead, so that that that's also a favorable thing. But then they got to play the Packers and they got to play the Bears. Bears, what they got to do? If the Bears win out, the Lions lose, and, and the Vikings lose twice, the Bears will get in the playoffs. That would be six losses for Minnesota. The Bears would be ten and six. But the Bears, Bears have to win out. The Bears, forget about. The, the Bears, Eddie, believe me, thinking about winning this week and next week and who we play and who's this. It's Green Bay Packers. That's all you're thinking about. There's three games left. Everything during the offseason that you guys have done on Monday, Tuesday, Friday, Saturday, whatever, you had to give up all summer. You went to the mini camps. You went to everything. It's boiled down now to three weeks. To three weeks to get to the Super Bowl. And why do you play this game? You play this game to be a world champion. So the only thing that is on their mind, Eddie, better be Green Bay. And there's there's no more fooling around, no more of the Bears dancing and having fun and whatever the hell it is that they do in that locker room. That's over with. This is all serious business right now. And if these guys continue thinking that way, We've got a good chance to win these games. Green Bay is it. Everything got a point to it. As far as the Rams schedule, too, just to name it, they play the Seahawks this week, Hamp, that's Sunday night football. And they got their at Dallas, who who knows if the Cowboys are ever going to find themselves, but that's it's a road game at Dallas who's going to be fighting for a playoff spot with the Eagles. Then they got to go to San Francisco, who's been one of the best teams in football all year. They could whiff. I'm not. They yeah. could lose all three. Right. So yeah. the, I, I, I think. Look, the, the Rams are look all, awful lot like a nine and seven team. Which look, if the Bears went out, it's a huge if. But if they, if they but do, wouldn't that be great? Like I said, at least we're in the playoffs. Right. Right. <laughs> it started three weeks ago, yeah. guys. Let me remind. You, apparently, you didn't listen to me. Just talk. It's Green Bay. Nothing else. It doesn't matter what the hell they do. If yeah, we take care of business, right. we got a damn good chance of being in it. Let's get uh, Rich and Valpo on with Kaz. Hamp will be in Kaz till midnight. What's up, Rich? Welcome to WGN. How's it going, guys? Good. Hey, listen. It's really a pleasure to talk to you guys. I was in one of the games in 85, and you guys are the best, man. You're, you're icons, you know? Well, you're very kind. They were What's your best. question tonight, Killer? Well, I had a question, and you you kind of covered it about Coach Garrett and possible getting fired. So, if you don't mind, can I ask another question? Go ahead, man. Um, with the, the things going legal as far as sports betting and all that, can you tell me would that increase the money that uh, the uh, teams will have, and will it improve on uh, you know players and, and all around equipment, uh, better training, and all that? All right, Maybe Rich. even uh, ex expand to more teams. Maybe getting a like a Chicago Cardinals scene back in Chicago and giving the Mankiewicz a little bit of competition. Interesting angle, That will Rich. never happen in Chicago. There will not be another team uh, from the NFL. That, is that the I I, I could tell you this. The, the individual <laughs> between the, the old American Conference or whatever the hell it was called and the individual, uh, and I'm pretty sure like 99.99%, George Hallis was the man that started the merger of the two leagues. Why? Because there will never be another team in Chicago. Yep. Uh, I would. I, I'm not a betting man, but I would put some money on that one. And as far as the gambling money, look, the NFL is in bed, and they will they will have even more dough. I don't what that means for well, the fans. Well, they're going to have a football team in, in Las Vegas next year. Well, they, that's where the Raiders are going. There's no doubt about it. All right, so let's, uh, Kazi, appreciate you, my friend. We'll talk to you uh, next week for a pregame show, 9 to noon. We are on for three hours in advance of Green Bay and the Chicago Bears up at Lambeau Field. And, guys, who would have thought three weeks ago that we would be this optimistic. So I'm just happy for the Bears, and especially the fans. Hey, the Glenn, fans deserve it. Did, right? You know why we're in this done. position? Because we had the New York Giants, and then the next game we had the Dallas Cowboys. That's why we're in the position we're in. Awful, but that's not their fault. You know, you still got to win the game. I'm just telling you, that's why. <laughs> you got it, guys. 
Bears. Next week, and you know what? It's the Bears-Packers. There's nothing better than that game. And, you know, Bears got to bring it. Pretty simple. Gazi, we'll talk to you Sunday morning, my friend. You got it. All right. See you. Bye. Who brought it today? Sponsored by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Illinois. The car to bring through it all. OB? I would say who brought it today that was I was impressed with. And the entire offense and defensive thing was the Bears' offensive line. They've been maligned pretty much all year. Been accused of not doing their job, not missing blocks, doing this, et cetera, et cetera. Today, when we needed them, they stepped up to the plate. So I give it to the offensive line. Anybody else, Sampo? And uh, the, the the main beneficiary of the offensive line, MVP Mitch. That was his best game I've seen him play in two years. 20. Well, let me tell you, Daniel, and I agree with you on that, but if those kids up front, those five guys up front, if they don't play the way they play tonight, Bingo. Mitch Trubisky is slaughtered. 23 and 31, three touchdown passes, ran one and two from 23 yards out. Uh, the Bears beat the Dallas Cowboys 31 to 24. Adam Hogue from Soldier Field is coming up next. Tampa OB with Kyle Spots. What about the callers? And the callers, of course, OB. Of course. Hang in there, you guys. Tampa OB with Kyle, sponsored by your Chicago Land and Northwest Indiana Chevy dealers at ChevyDriveChicago.com. That we have that are, you know, previously been injured before the game um, are all going to be week to week and we basically now have nine days to evaluate and see where they're at so we'll we'll do that um as we go um taken away from the game after watching the tape uh i thought we had a lot of guys that stepped up in different roles um and uh, you know we we appreciate that we had, we had a bunch of guys hurt uh in particular uh with pierre lewis i said last night kevin tolliver uh cornelius lucas and then jp holtz uh as well um, just had a did, has been doing a lot of good things for us, you know. So um, that part's good. Um, we got the win. I like where we're at, but it's uh, you know the guys to to get mentally and physically rested here in the next couple of days, and and then when we get back here, yeah, it's right back to the blinders. We don't care about anything other than trying to to beat Green Bay. Does, Ro does Roquan's injury change Danny's projected time at all? No. No, it, it's, it doesn't. Um, all those guys are kind of their own individual plans, and uh, it is what it is. You know, it's unfortunate, um, you know, with some of the, the injuries that we've had uh, this year, but it's a part of the game. It's a physical game. And I just like the fact that our coaches are preparing our depth guys to come in and, and we're, you know, it's no slight on the other guys, but we're having, our, you know, the depth of guys that are coming in and playing, we like that. possibility of Teresa? Again, I don't, I don't, I don't know that for sure yet. Why did that work so well? Would you say? Well, we, we caught him in a in a blitz, um, and sometimes you know if you run that same play versus drop eight, it's a bad play call. You know, so it, it just it ends up being a good play call. We got him in a blitz, and then the guys executed it. Timing, the execution, the details of why you run that that route, why you block the way you block um, on that on that type of gap screen. Uh, it was it was just really neat too. Um, I think the details of uh, Leno and and James Daniels in them working vertically downfield and setting up the angles for the DBs to make a decision, and then JP's able to scoot in there and get another 10 yards. So just the little intricacies of that play, it, that's one that you put on for um, for down the road for clinic. You said last. Yesterday was your, your best game in terms of yards after catch. I mean, other than the screen, what did you see maybe from, from Mitch and facilitating uh, yeah, well, you you uh, you start seeing that, and you start getting no matter of how far downfield the throws are. Right, there's some that weren't very. We didn't have a whole lot of taking. We didn't take a whole lot of shots, but the rack yards was good yesterday. Um, and and you can see how effective it can be, even if it's not. Um, it might not be a ten yard bubble screen every time, right? But they they can they can um, add up. And I think yesterday they they we had some that added up kept them guessing and we had some that produced for a touchdown with, with uh 17 with uh, anthony miller's touchdown was just i mean yeah great run great throw all that stuff but the best part of that play was eight was um ridley and cordell patterson making great blocks otherwise he doesn't score Matt, you spoke yesterday about saying you were feeling good about the development of this offensive identity. How would you describe that identity of what you wanted to be? And at what point did you start feeling positive about where you were going with that? Well, you know, probably three to four or five weeks ago, somewhere in that range, when you start really starting to feel, okay, we're moving the ball. Um, we felt it against the Chargers. 
we just weren't good in the red zone, right? Uh, but we felt we felt like we were okay moving the ball. That we were limiting three and outs. And ever since then, um, there's just a, a great confidence amongst the teammates. They're feeling it. We feel it, and I think it's reflecting in the game. And specifically with with Mitch on, in the zone read game. Yeah. How do you feel like in, in the entire time you've worked with him last season included, he has evolved as a decision maker, keying whatever you want him to key, um, and making those decisions in the right way. He's 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 evolving. Um, in, in a good way, I, I like I like the pace that he's because it, it's there's a lot of different looks that are presented with uh, with the defensive ends and how they play it and then how they do different things with the with the linebackers. Yesterday, you'll see on tape there's several times where they did the squeeze scrape where they crash, he pulls it, and now the backer scrapes over the top. Well, our tackles did a great job of kicking out and he hit it up in there, and so that kind of stuff uh, between coaching with our with our offensive coaches. Uh, between executing with the line and decision making with the quarterback, all that when you put it together, it's hard to stop. And yesterday, you felt that um, it was. We were all kind of clicking at the same time. There was eleven people um, producing and making the right decisions, and it's effective.